Once you become professional musicians, how do you maintain the passion and kind of the, the spirit that got you there in the first place? Once it becomes a job, do you find it difficult to maintain um, that energy to, to keep it exciting and fun? It's never a job. Good, that's good to hear. <laughs> It's never a job, actually. It's, it's <laughs> never. We're so lucky because it, it is not a job for us. It's, just, it's a way of life. A yeah. way of life and that you love and you do what you love. That's the only passion. Yeah. If you find a way to have fun with music, and to um, analyze the music again, you know, um, with that to, um, to make your piece, but But there is something, knowing also that, you know, for uh, over the years, to be a good musician, you need to be obsessed. You need to be sick in a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are a normal person, you're going to be a normal musician. But if you are on the edge of being sick, then you become Crazy. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is the fine line, re really, where you have to be a little nut to be a good musician. These people wake up in the morning and think of music, wake up in the morning and think of their instrument, and go back to bed and they dream of the music of them during the day. And that happens 24 hours. It's yeah. constantly, whenever they are traveling or they are at home. It's not like that. That's not true. It's, it's a lie. It's a, it's well, a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's a. Um, it's an obsession, I call it like that. And that works for anything. Any, any job you want to do well, you have to be obsessed with your job, and then you will excel. Mm -hmm. But if you try to do like a job from nine to four or 10 to six, and then life continues in other ways, you are an employee doing some other work. You know, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you're not a musician. Yeah. Not. Speaking of um, do, having that be like a lifestyle, do you do any of y'all have any non-music related hobbies that you do, like I don't know, play video games or go yeah, exercise or something? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. Let's see. Do we do any hobbies? Have you ever before in the lab? I read. What do you Sometimes. say? Yeah. I read the book. Ah, Sometimes. reading, reading, <laughs> reading. <laughs> 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 I mean, his relationship with the dog is really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, I'm How talking about. Like? Yeah. Um, uh, I like reading, reading, and I do yoga yeah, and meditation. But um, but I think that it's not um, um, the only things I like. Um, um, it is for my performance, my music. Yeah. Very well, come on stage. Good. We have to ask a question to him. I mean, because. <laughs> okay, have, have there ever been a time in your nice life where you just felt like you weren't connecting to the music, you weren't able to be fully present, and just, I don't know, almost like there was something blocking you from connecting? And if so, how did you deal with that? Yeah, beautiful question. On stage. I, I would agree. Like No, dici in generale, se avete mai sperimentato momenti nella vostra vita in cui avete avuto dei blocchi e non riuscivate a connettervi con la musica, col vostro, col vostro brano, col vostro programma, col, col vostro mondo musicale, come un blocco. I can easily reply, this was exactly my feeling at the end of my doctorate, where when I, when I finished I said, 
uh, if I keep playing the piano how they teach the piano here, I cannot. Mm -hmm. So that's when I've decided to participate at IBA and, and, and I would say it's always, al always the same. Um, how can I explain? Just if just focus on how the music would come in the most natural way and forget about anything and anything else around you, then it may be good, it may be bad, but if you try like to imitate and to follow a certain pattern or a certain scheme that somebody is going to impose you, there is when I, I felt really in trouble. To, to follow up on that, I had a very similar, well not a very similar experience, a very different experience where I felt completely stifled creatively. I was um, hired to whistle in a cabaret in Paris, which was a phenomenal opportunity, it was really fun, but musically I had to whistle to a track. So there was nothing to collaborate with, I was just doing the exact same thing every single night, six nights a week. And I never had an opportunity to refine it or to adapt or to change it or to grow. It was just like being in the army. You show up, you do it. You show up, you do it. And of course, it was great to have the work and it was a really unique opportunity to live in Paris. But musically, I felt like it was a dead end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved being there. It was, like I said, it was fantastic. But there are some sacrifices you make for a stable gig sometimes. Mm -hmm. 